Welcome to another edition of the Morning Devotional. My name is Pastor William Hill, the pastor of Providence Presbyterian Church located in Evansville, Indiana. Today is Tuesday, September 19th, 2023. This is edition number 161 of season eight as we continue looking at the Westminster Confession of Faith. We're in paragraph number 29. Today we'll look at paragraph number two. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, as we continue looking at this confession that helps us understand your word and we consider the Lord's Supper and all that it pictures represents for us. We pray that you through the eternal spirit would give us guidance and grace, that you would teach us by your word, that you would strengthen us through these things and that you would forgive us for the many ways in which we fall short of your glory. Be kind to us now and help us to see, we pray for Christ's sake. Amen. Well, now we turn our attention uh, to matters pertaining to paragraph number two as we continue to look at uh, issues re related to the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. Paragraph number two reads, In this sacrament, Christ is not only is not offered up to his Father, nor any real sacrifice made at all for remission of sins of the quicker dead, but only a commemoration of that one offering up of himself, by himself upon the cross once for all and a spiritual oblation of all possible praise unto God for the same so that the popish sacrifice of the mass as they call it is most abominably injurious to Christ one one only sacrifice the only the alone propitiation for all the sins of his elect now this is one of those times in the confession in which we have very much a polemical statement that is to say um, a defense or an attack even against, uh, really an attack uh, against uh, the abuses of the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, this mention of the Mass there at the end and working backwards now in this paragraph, this mention of the Mass is important that we recognize how it's related to the, ones, the one only sacrifice that is mentioned there in this paragraph. You see, it's in the Roman Catholic Mass and Frankly, I, I doubt many Roman Catholic parishioners understand this uh, unless they've given time to, in study to the Roman Catholic canons and dogmas. But it is in the Mass that Christ is indeed re-crucified. Whenever the Pope, or whenever the Pope indeed, but whenever the priest uh, 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 turns and uh, his back to the parishioners and he holds the cup up, uh, in, in such a manner, uh, he is in fact engaging in that act in which they are, according to their doctrines, re-crucifying the Lord of glory. This is an abomination of the highest order. It is simply to say that they themselves think that there's some need for Christ to be re-crucified, whether it literally or in picture or form, and this is why in Romanism and in some branches of Christianity itself, you see crucifixes with Christ still on the cross. And these things are all a gross abomination against the once one only sacrifice made by Christ. And so he is not offered up to his father, nor any real sacrifice made at all for remissions of sin of the quick or the dead in this meal. Christ has been sacrificed once for all for the remission of sin. And he's done this to the praise and the glory of his Father as the paragraph here communicates quite clearly. And so we ought not think of it in those terms. Christ died once for all for your sin. The meal itself is a commemoration of that one offering up of himself by himself upon the cross once for all in a spiritual oblation or praise Praise unto God for the same. And so this popish sacrifice and other branches of Christendom that hold to a very confused and warped understanding of the Lord's Supper, um, it's just not necessary, brothers and sisters, friends. Jesus Christ has died once for all for sin. And only He is able to do that. He being the very Son of the living and true God. Let me just read a couple references uh, uh, before I close out what is, I think, m most obvious for most Protestants uh, within the Christian church, but Hebrews chapter 10, verses 10 through 14, and by that will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. 
And every priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time until his enemies should be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering he was perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. Under the Old Testament economy, sacrifices continued day after day, day after day. But now, because of Christ, the one only sacrifice necessary has done and accomplished all that is necessary. We do not need to do it again. Matthew chapter 26, uh, verses 26 and uh, 27. Of course, there we see how Jesus Christ in his example is offering thanks to his Father. Matthew 26, verses 26 and 27. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples. Take, eat, this is my body. And he took cup, took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. And so we are to be thankful, even as Christ was thankful. Perhaps your minister, when the Lord's Supper is being administered, he he pauses and gives, gives thanks uh, for these, these, um, these symbols that are sitting on the table. Uh, the bread symbolizing the broken body of the Lord Jesus Christ and the cup representing the spilled blood of which there is no possibility of remission of sin. But these are symbols. These, these are not actual events that are happening in front of you. They have happened once for all that your sin might indeed be taken away and atoned for. Only through Christ can that happen. And so we see that very much in this meal. Well, I trust these times are helpful. If you have any comments or questions, you can reach me, you can reach me by uh, using that information that is there before you on the screen. And so until the Wednesday edition, when we continue looking at chapter 29, may the Lord help you today. May you strive uh, to be in his word, to pray, and to do what he has indeed told you to do. God bless.